Hey guys, Winston at Carbide3D here. Today on Material Monday, let's talk about wrench shape. If you're from the modeling and prototyping world, you're probably familiar with this stuff already. But those of you who haven't worked with it before might be missing out on some of the benefits of what this engineered material can offer. Wrench shape is a polyurethane based material that you can get in different densities that's ideal for prototyping because it's dimensionally stable and incredibly easy to machine. It doesn't dull your cutters and it's very forgiving with regards to feeds and speeds. This makes it useful for validating toolpaths if you need to test out a high-risk machining operation and also visualizing parts. It's sort of the ultimate blank slate for 3D carving. Renshape can also hold shockingly fine details and it's also good for applications like vacuum forming because it's slightly porous. So let's figure out how to machine this stuff. The starting point for a lot of my experiments is rooted in numbers. Chip load to be specific. If you need a primer on feeds and speeds, I'll link one of my videos in the description. Basically, how thick a chip does your cutter shave off? How much does your CNC advance per revolution of the end mill? 1 thou per tooth or 0.0254 millimeters is usually where I start. Since I'm using the 102 square cutter with two flutes, that means I have to feed at 20 inches per minute if I'm running at 10,000 RPM. But because this is wrench shape and it's supposed to be easy, I'm going to try something two and a half times more aggressive. Compared to how I cut aluminum at 0.01 inch step downs, I'm also going to say we can triple that. So my starting point for this test removes material 7.5 times faster than my aluminum cutting parameters. My step over is a pretty standard 50%. I'm being a little cautious here because I'm using double sided tape to hold down my stock and I don't want it to rip off the wasteboard. Not yet at least, I want to creep up on the limits. And these parameters cut without an issue, so let's ramp things up. How about 60 inches per minute and a 50 thou step down? That should remove material about 15 times faster than my aluminum baseline. And it really doesn't even sound like the spindle is trying. Also, the fact that you can hear the spindle is pretty nice because wrench shape cuts much quieter than wood. I'll save you guys the boredom of the next hour of my experimentation and just tell you the fees and speeds I settled on. I ultimately ended up doing an adaptive clear at 10,000 RPM, maxing out the Nomad at 100 inches per minute, using a 0.08 inch optimal load and a 0.15 inch depth of cut, more than one times the diameter of the end mill. If you wanted to use a basic pocketing toolpath, just use the optimal load as your step over. In case you're wondering, this is 96 times more aggressive than my aluminum recipe. And you know what? You can now finally, just barely, hear the Nomad spindle motor straining. Just a little. Wrench shape is seriously that easy to cut. You could even conceivably use quarter inch tooling in the Nomad to machine wrench shape. By the way, to finish this little design that I'm making, I'm using a 132nd inch ball end mill in a morphed spiral toolpath at 10,000 RPM, 50 inches per minute, and a step over of 3 thou. This was actually my first time machining wrench shape, and its ability to hold details even in very thin features really impressed me, as did its effortless machining. So if you're looking to try out wrench shape for some prototyping, don't sweat the feeds and speeds. It's super forgiving, put the pedal down and hog out material fast. That is after all the whole point of using this material. I hope even if you didn't plan on using wrench shape anytime soon, that you've gained at least a little bit of appreciation for what you can do with it. Good luck and have fun machining folks.